Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. You know, some of you may have heard that Pythagoras did some work with triangles. Well, we woodworkers also do a lot of work with triangles. You know, one of the most annoying, and for beginners especially, the commonest mistakes that you can make, no matter how good your planing skills, your chiseling skills, and your, how large your toolbox is, is goes right back to the beginning of how you set pieces out, and most especially how you mark them. So I'm going to show you the fundamental way that will guarantee that you don't make any of these mistakes. Here are two pieces of wood and I'm going to join them together because I need a piece a little wider. So each piece separately gets put in the bias and gets planed and prepared and everything and if I don't mark them I can make a lot of mistakes. So I use what's known as the triangle method. Now if you come close I'll show you what that is. Having decided that I want these two pieces to go together like this, and whatever this piece of wood is going to be, this is the top, and this is the bottom, and this is the face side, and that's the, the back side, I mark a triangle like this on both pieces so that I can see, first of all, that whatever side the mark is, I know that's the face side of the wood and whatever side, whatever end the triangle comes to a point, I know that's the top. So ideally, when these pieces are prepared and glued together, they will fit like this and I will see the triangle. Now you might think that's pretty simple, but look, if I didn't have the triangles on there, look how many ways I could mess up. This is the correct way but inadvertently, I could have it this way. I could also have it inadvertently this way, or I might have it this way. Whichever way I look, that's at least four different ways I can make a mistake. So it's a very simple thing, but after you've decided how you're gonna put pieces together, use the triangle method and I've made this clear with a pretty deep pencil mark. It doesn't have to be that light. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, 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 that heavy. But this will always tell me that whatever side the mark is on, that's the face of the, of the, of the wood. And whichever way is the top of the triangle, that will show me how they go together. I'm not going to make this mistake, or this mistake, or this mistake it's or even this mistake here right so that's the method here are a couple of real life examples of how i've used that and you can see how important that is this is a frame that we're going to be showing in a, uh, a subsequent episode about how to make mortise and tenons and put things together but this is four pieces of wood and you can see that there's each piece has a mark, and each mark is part of the triangle. So I first thing I know is that these faces are the face side. The second thing I know that this is always the top piece, this is always the bottom piece, this is always the right hand piece from my point of view, and this is always the left hand piece of view. Now, that's a pretty simple example. And you might think, eh, maybe I could get by just by remembering there was a knot here and this had a little extra squiggle here. But look at this example. This is a piece of frame and paneling that's in production. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six, and when this gets in there, seven pieces. Given that with the two pieces, I, there were four possible ways of getting it wrong. You can see that 
two pieces multiplied by seven pieces, I could be in a terrible mis mess. But if you look at this piece closely, you can see how it's absolutely foolproof. The mark shows me that each of these pieces are now the face pieces. This is the bottom of the triangle. This is the bottom piece. This is the middle piece because it's the middle of a triangle. This is the top piece because it's the pointy part of the triangle. This is the left hand piece and this is the right hand piece. I think that's pretty simple. It doesn't take much effort to do that. But if you do that at the beginning of every piece that you're going to construct, you're going to save yourself a lot of frustration. There's nothing worse than having made complicated moldings and mortise and tenon joints, and not to mention, you know, more complicated dovetail things that we'll get into in later episodes, only to find when it comes to assembly that you've planed it on the wrong side or you've turned it upside down. So I hope you like that. I hope you can get into the, uh, into the triangle method. If you want to see more, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. And as usual, I welcome your comments and your questions and hope to see you back here really soon. Thank you.